Hey everybody, and welcome to episode one of our brand new Football Manager series. As you can probably tell on screen, we've taken over Charlton Athletic in League One uh, in England. So, here we are, start of a new season. We've skipped most of pre-season. We've uh, wanted to pretty much get into the action straight away if we possibly could. Um, we've got one more friendly to go, which is against Welling United, which is today. But we have instructed our uh, assistant managers to take over that for us. So we go Charlton Hire FM as manager. So that's us, that's Frosty, Frosty FM. We are the new manager, we've taken over Lee Bowyer. Our inaugural welcome to Charlton email. So as you can see, we're on £3,800 a week, expiring next year. So I'm going to attend the meeting. So as always, it's probably best to learn as much as you can about a new club. I'm not a real-life supporter of Charlton Athletic. Um, visited the stadium quite a few times, really enjoy that stadium as, a, as an away fan. Um, so yeah, it's, it's nice to pick up um, some of the history of a club when taking over in FM. So the board are asking us to sign young players for the first team and develop players using the club's youth system. We can completely agree with that. At the moment, there's no further philosophies we'd like to introduce. We're of course going to meet the journalists and fans. No negative reaction then from either of them. When we refuse to go. And then on a final note from the chairman. Um, the club has many responsibilities. Which can either be handled by ourselves or the members. And he's told us that we're free to adjust staff responsibilities with the club as we see fit. We've already done that. We've adjusted some of them. So we're kind of not taking on all of the day-to-day -day jobs that we possibly could. That's a personal preference of mine more than anything. Um... But in this series, we will be asking the assistant manager to do a majority of some of the stuff. We'll meet up with Johnny Jackson at a later date. So we know about tactics, we know what to do. I'll show you the tactics that we're using in a little bit. There's three that we've downloaded from FM Scout. Um, same for training, but we are asking Johnny Jackson to do our training. So, future transfers or transfers coming in. We've uh, had Lyle Taylor from Wimbledon on a free. Um, Darren Prattley from Bolton on a free. Jamie Ward, Jed Steer, Josh Cullen, Christian is it Be Bellick, and Josh Umar are, are all loaned either in or out. There's only Josh that's been loaned out to Boreham Wood. Taking a look at the team in a minute, it's quite concerning how many injuries we've actually got. So here's our injury update. There's eight that we've got out on injury at the moment. Eleven in the team, four on the bench. We've 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 really got to get some youth players in, I think, to to hold the fort whilst we wait for players to come back um, off injuries. I think particular issues that we've got is uh, Jake Forster Kasky. Um, he's out for almost a year, ten to eleven months. Uh, we damage crucial ligaments. There's a couple of first team players or first team standard in, in Billy Clark, Christian Bellick, Tarek Fosu, um, and Igor Vetakili. They're all out. They're first team players. So I'm hoping that, that there's not much damage to our actual performances, but we are going to have to rely on a few youth to players to, to fill up the squad a little bit. So there you go there, you can see very briefly uh, recruitment. So we'll be dealing with recruitment ourselves, majority. But in terms of renewing contracts and outgoing transfers, we will leave that to the chairman. Team talks are going to be down to me, but opposition instructions and managing of friendlies will be up to Johnny Jackson. We'll deal with the media. And then we've set training um, at Johnny Jackson. So here's our Charlton background. Um, Charlton finished sixth in League One last season. Obviously, never got promoted through the playoffs, and that's something we're hoping to to change this year. Um, 
So we play at the Valley, like I said, I've been there a couple of times in real life. It is a, it is a wonderful stadium. It's a proper, like, close feel uh, stadium. Really enjoy it. So in terms of trophies, there's a 1FA Cup, a Skybet Championship, a Skybet League One, and then two third divisions south. Um, so it's, it's not a huge history in terms of trophies, but there's a massive history in terms of the club. Um, as he says, they're a club. Uh, best fella success was during the 1930s. Um, our rivals, obviously Millwall and Crystal Palace, aren't much of an issue just yet, apart from any uh, cup competitions that we may face them in. But in terms of league, there's nothing really um, that we've we've got going. So there's our weaknesses and strengths. Um, big issues, obviously, transfer budget, but that's quite a good... 100,000 is not a bad transfer budget for League One. Obviously, it's going to be clubs with bigger transfer budgets, but there are definitely clubs with smaller transfer budgets. Obviously, our injuries are a big issue at the moment. Um, but we've got quite a few more strengths with uh, vision, dribbling, balance, pace, um, coaching staff. You know, the list goes on. So, we've hopefully got a lot of positives going our way. Hopefully, get a lot more players back from injury as we continue through the season but ultimately we're going to have to fill that that void um, with youth players I think so there we are away to uh, Welling United tonight that will be handled by Johnny Jackson so our first game of the season will be away to Sunderland obviously recently relegated to League 1 it's going to be a tough ask but I think for any League One supporters out there or any clubs that are recently relegated to League One, you find out pretty quickly that actually League One is quite a difficult league. There are lots of small clubs that do really well in League One and lots of big clubs that struggle. Ultimately, the big clubs eventually end up getting promoted, but there are a lot of big clubs such as Portsmouth and Sunderland that have struggled over the years and have struggled to get back out of League One. So we'll continue on, we'll let Johnny Jackson handle our friendly um, against Welling. The board, these have been set by the board, these haven't been set by me. So the board are expecting us to get promoted out of League One. They want a third round tie of the FA Cup and second round in the Carabao Cup. The Carabao Cup might be quite difficult because I believe we're away to uh, Brentford. So we introduce ourselves to the squad. I don't want to say that we're good enough to go up as champions, although I, I believe that we probably are once we get some people back um, from uh, from injury. So we're gonna we're gonna go for automatic promotion. The squad are obviously up for it, but Lyle Taylor, the only one that obviously wants to set the bar a little bit higher. Ultimately, we are going to be aiming to win the league. Um, we'll set up for that, but we don't really want to sell that to the team just yet. Obviously, and the majority of the team believe that automatic promotion is a huge challenge anyway, so we don't we don't want to push it too far. And there we go. We've kept majority of people relatively happy, boosted morale a little bit. So we'll stick with Chris Solly for the uh, captain for the season. And on to our first game, or first friendly. Not too interested in the interest squad. We've, we've got a few players out on injury and we don't really want to be um, getting any more picked up in, in the off-season. So tactics, the first one we've actually introduced and a really, really good one. Obviously you can see some people aren't really suited to those roles, but we've just got so many players out on injury. It's hard to fill those at the moment. But the tactic we've taken is the 433 HB, and that's our FM, FM Scout. I will leave the description below. Uh, leave the, the link to the tactic in the description below, rather. But the two other tactics we've taken is the 4231 Zion 2.0. Recently updated, or updated a little while back, and that's relatively good. It, it, it works similar to the 433, 
but on a more attacking basis but I use, like to use that one as a second kind of uh, tactic it's not really my first choice that 4 3 three's worked quite well in uh, like private seasons and then the City Genjin AM uh, with the attacking midfielder it's similar to uh, the Zion one it's just slightly more attacking but the 4 3 three is the one we're going to go with We've set mentality to attacking and I find that works better. I think it's set to uh, positive usually, but I find the attacking is better. It just depends with this team at the moment if we've got enough in, in defence of strength to hold back. So there's just a quick overview of our fitness test. There's a few that still aren't quite match fit. Um, still some that aren't anywhere near match fit. So we'll leave this game to Johnny Jackson. Well in United away. Obviously not too much of an issue. But we do take a 4-0 win with Lyle Taylor getting two goals. Jamie Ward and Chris Solly to get in the other two. So... Onto the real deal. As you can see, first game of the season we're away at Sunderland. Doesn't really mean a lot this early on in the season, but obviously going up against Sunderland, we really want to test ourselves. They'll be one of the teams that are fighting for promotion at the end of the season. So this is a good kind of place to test ourselves. We know we've got quite a lot of players out injured. But I'm, I'm quite confident that we'll we'll be able to do something. So our, um, our chairman's accepting offers for us for loan players. I'm getting our younger players some uh, match experience. Obviously, we've still, still, still got eight injured players. And four that are at risk of injury. We seem to be struggling a little bit with injury um, at the moment. So we've been invited to our first press conference as Charlton manager. Hi Frosty, what are your initial thoughts on taking the Charlton job? Obviously we're very excited, it's a great club and we really can't wait to get stuck in. We're excited for the following season. Um, we've got no doubts that Chairman's got the club's best interests at heart. Obviously the, the development of youth players supports that, just building the club up from the ground really. They are a massive club, so that's what attracted us. No, I mean, there's, there's there's nothing. There are going to be challenges, and obviously if we mess it up, then we won't be staying around very long at Charlton. I think within the real world, there are plenty of examples of really young managers being very successful. So I don't think age is too much of an issue. Or a very ambitious club, obviously, setting the, uh, the target is to get promoted. No issues whatsoever with changing staff, we'll keep everybody in jobs. We've got a very, very good team who are upbeat in terms of mood. And that's what we want to take into the season, really. Three days to go until we uh, travel to Sunderland on the Friday night to be the curtain raiser. So promotion odds looking here. Three to two. Uh, the bookmakers believe that we are one of the teams that could get promoted. So they're reckoning that Sunderland are going to get promoted uh, as champions. We'll end up getting promoted second with Fleetwood, Barnsley, Portsmouth, Portsmouth and Burton Albion finishing up the playoffs. Obviously this means absolutely nothing coming into uh, when we come to the end of the season. With the odds of that being, as the bookies predicted it, they're quite low. But... We, we've, we've definitely got a good chance of promotion this year. I honestly believe that we can do that. So we'll continue to uh, press on for our away trip. I mean, it's a hell of a trip up to Sunderland from Charlton. Obviously, we're going from central London to, uh, up to Sunderland on a Friday night. Massive credit to the travelling fans that are making that journey. We'll 
especially the, the, the fans that made that journey in real life. Huge amounts of uh, respect for that. So Lyle Taylor and Carl and Grant, two of our strikers are expected to finish top goal scorers. That would be wonderful. And with our match at Sunderland tomorrow, obviously we're, we'd like to see lots of goals. However, difficult setup. I really don't think there'll be an absolute goal fest, but we'll uh, we'll wait and see. So there we go. Then the media reporting on our uh, managerial debut. The odds on at the moment are that Sunderland are likely to take the win. We've got every chance of walking away with something. And there's Jack Ross's uh, view on uh, us taking over as an unknown manager. We'll hopefully get one over on him tomorrow night. Before we start the season, the Checker Trade Trophy, it's a difficult one because I don't really know if, if teams or fans are really bothered with it anymore. We'll skip the whole draw and we'll find out that we're against uh, Yeovil Peterborough and Arsenal's under-23s. We'll obviously take the trophy relatively seriously. We're not going to risk winning that trophy for our league position overall, but we will... Uh, we will, we will take it fairly seriously. A trophy is a trophy at the end of the day, isn't it? So there's just a confirmation that we're facing Arsenal's on the 23s. Yeovil and Peterborough. Peter obviously being the bigger challenge of all of them. They're in League One and currently obviously pushing for promotion in real life as well. We've picked our team. We know roughly who we're going to be going with. Obviously we haven't got much choice at the moment due to injury. We know Jason is obviously a brilliant centre back. I mean, he's crucial to the team. Been a bit dramatic there. The transfer window slammed shut in just a few days. We don't really discuss it. I don't really know. We haven't looked. Um, and we'd like to choose ourselves, obviously. So I think to keep everybody happy, we will choose ourselves. Just a very quick look at our training schedule for the next, well, it's September. Um, two games in September that we're pre uh, preparing for, Arsenal the 23s and Wickham. This is what our upcoming schedule looks like though. We've got Sunderland away tomorrow. Um, Shrewsbury then at home. Away at Brentford in the Checker Trade. Uh, not the Checker Trade, sorry, the Carabao Cup. Away at Accrington Stanley and then at home to Peterborough for our first five games. I'm feeling quite positive about this season. Like I said, we'll focus more on league and getting and getting promotion. Um, I, I'm not too fussed personally whether we win the league, finish runners up, or are promoted through the playoffs. I quite like the playoffs. Playoffs really exciting. Obviously, there's that, always that bigger risk of a. Uh, Getting knocked out of the playoffs. So here it is. Game number one. Of our uh, season. We'll quickly go to the, uh, the squad. Well, actually no we don't. <coughs> we'll look at our under 23s and see. Let's see if we can get some. Some decent players. Up to our senior squad for a little bit. We just need to bulk out. Bulk out who we've got really. We need to really make a bench of players. We've taken three. Maybe actually we'll take one more for good luck. And we'll take these up to Sunderland for... A quarter to eight kickoff on the Friday night, opening the League One season for everybody. 
anyone that's watching, it's obviously on telly. We're hoping to give everybody a bit of an exciting start. There we are, Sunderland in their home strip, red and white striped. Charlton in a quite garish yet quite exciting yellow away strip. No real form to go on or anything yet. It doesn't really come into play. This is the team we'll be going with. We'll have a quick look at that in a second. No real changes according to the assistant manager. And we've just got our youth players to number up. So there's our lineup. You can see Sunderland's on the left. Quite a strong lineup by Sunderland. There's ours with a steering goal. Page at left back, Pierce and Saar in the centre back position, and Solly in the right back. We've got Cullen in front of them too. Arebo and Prattley in the middle, with Ward and Taylor up front on the wings, and Grant on his own up front. We're playing the 4 3 3 formation. Team talk, obviously, we want to give it for the fans this one. First game of the season, we'll let the assistant do the rest. So here is the uh, the walkout, and off we go. Sunderland to kick off first. What we're hoping to do with the attacking is keep a bit of pressure on, but enough players up front to be able to uh, to counter quite well. So Sunderland made absolutely nothing. We've had the first shot, but it's not on target. Possession swinging back and forth at the moment, but Sunderland currently have got the most. So we've got a throw in 13 minutes in. With Grant on the wing. And a good header. Put straight at the keeper. No real threat there whatsoever. Nice free kick here by Ward. And we've earned a corner from that as it strikes Lee Catamol in the wall. So a rebo to take the corner. Cleared away by Max Power. And it's quite an unfortunate cross. It was quite good, but nothing really came of that one. Again, got another free kick. And there's our first goal of the season. We're 1-0 up. Ward with an absolutely cracking free kick. Um, keeper seemed to punch that one in. I'll tell you what, we'll pause it for a second. Make sure we get replays on as well for everybody. We'll have goals. I'm not really interested in notifications at the moment. That looks like everything we need. So we'll crack on at 23 minutes in. Jamie Ward obviously getting the first goal for us. We want to push on, really, and take take a 2-0 lead um, into half-time if we can. That would be much better. But we're only 25 minutes in on the attack again with Jamie Ward. And there's 2-0. Colin Grant with his first goal of the season. Absolute mess up at the back by Sunderland there. No communication whatsoever. There you go, you'll see the replay now. We've added these on. Jamie Ward just loads of space in the middle. Overhit pass and then just a terrible back pass. Keeper wasn't switched on. And we go 2 0 up in 26 minutes away from home. Sunderland have yet to have a shot. And we'd like to keep that as much as possible. So Jed Steer with the ball, running out, kicking it out to Taylor on the wing. He's got some support on the other wing. Um, I mean, we just gave up on that one. Sunderland win the ball back. Good clearance now there on the counter. George Honeyman in the middle, out to Catamult. And we need to keep them in their half really. Thirty minutes in, two nil up. Keep them in their half. It, it's going to be difficult. We only had one shot so far they have. So we, we, we want to keep that pressure up really. Carl and Grant through on goal. And there's 3-0. Absolutely running away with this. Second goal of the season for Carl and Grant. Second goal of the game obviously. And, and Sunderland are just all over the shop. What I found with this 4-3-3 formation though. Is it gives you, you enough support in the defensive areas. 
a brilliant amount of support in the middle to kind of go back and support the defence, but continue to press when need be for attacking. There's Max Power's effort, side netting, half an hour in. Sunderland again, only one real shot. Uh, Arebo, and there's four. Four goals in the first 30 minutes. That's just incredible. Incredible start for us. You see, there's just there's there's no pressure really by by Sunderland. You can see the players there: Carl and Grant and Jamie Ward on eight for their ratings so far. It just looks like every time we attack, we're going to score. And just over by Prattley. Brilliant cross by Ward there. So coming up to half time, two minutes added on. Got another free kick on the wing. I think at half time, well, there's no real need for us to continue to attack. Obviously, starting the season off, we've got well, the first half off with four goals. It's a, a wonderful start to our season. But Sunderland are on the break. We're looking to keep as many clean sheets as we possibly can. Um, puts less pressure on us in the attacking areas, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what our defence can hold up. Sunderland's slowly getting their foot in the game. Now Max Power takes a shot, but Jed Steer's got that. No issues whatsoever with that. So I've got about a minute and a half left till half time been quite breezy actually been quite easy so far for us um, Sunderland haven't done a lot a couple of mistakes by Sunderland I think has led to the goals looking back at theirs and there we go 4-0 at half time with Jamie Ward and Joe Arebo getting a goal apiece and Carl Grant getting two in three minutes you see with the 15 shots and seven on target that 4-3-3 formation really drives an attacking force and in leagues like League One, it's quite good actually, especially with some of the talent we've got. So there's absolutely no need for us to go out attack it at four. There's, I don't think there's any threat from Sunderland in this second half really. Well, we'll stick it at balanced. We're not looking to tire any people out. However, I mean Jamie Ward's just struck our fifth. Absolute screamer of a goal, 20 seconds after half time. And he's now got two for the game and uh, two on the season. So another free kick. Cleared away quite easily by Sunderland. Max Pair on the ball on the wing. A fantastic tackle there. Timed it to perfection really. I find it easier sometimes with these early games as teams haven't really found their rhythm. Um Obviously, that they understand your tactics more and more. Um, five nil results become a lot harder to achieve. Um, teams like Sunderland, though, are a bit like us. Really, they've got a lot of players out injured. Uh, they they had they started this game with five out injured. Um, you know, it, it, it it's a big dent in a team. So we'll bring uh, some subs on now. We'll bring Nicky or Jose on. Who else is struggling? That'll be Joe Arebo. See if we can swap him out. We'll get uh, Mark Marshall to swap with Joe Arebo. And then um, Jamie Ward. I mean, I, I know he's had two goals already, but 
I don't really want him too injured uh, or, too, or too tired. We're, we're at 5 0 already. There's absolutely no point being um, risky or anything and risking people at this stage in the season. And there we go. Lee Catamore's been sent off. I mean, that's made our, our, our evening a lot, a lot easier now as they're down to 10 men. We're already 5 0 up. We're just, we're all over this one at the moment. Sunderland managed to clear the ball though. 20 shots at the moment with 9 on target. Obviously be more of a threat if more of those were on target. But can't complain at being 5-0 up in 71 minutes so far. You can see Sunderland players there ratings down as low as 5.2. And not having a brilliant night of it at all. So Solly on the ball. Uh, nothing comes of that one. We've got to throw in a little bit further up. Solly back on the ball. Good tackle there. Well timed. And Marshall just, just a speculative effort really. So 80, 85 minutes in. Not a lot's happened for Sunderland at all tonight. Again, that's probably what their fifth shot on target. Oh no, sorry, fifth shot altogether. They're second on target from a free kick. Two minutes to play uh, on the 90. And uh, a fantastic start to our season. Can't really, can't really ask for a better start whatsoever. Um, the clean sheet, ending on a clean sheet, we'll just top it off really with five goals and a clean sheet. One of probably our bigger threats in League One this season for promotion. Um, and we've given them a, a very, very strong, clear message about what we're all about this year. Dying seconds of the game, then, and that should, and that's it. There we go. Absolutely dominated. Twenty-three shots, nine of them on target, five goals altogether. Just absolutely wonderful. So we'll give our team talk passionate. We are extremely happy with the results and the way that they played. We'll let the assistant finish off the rest. So there we are, sat obviously top of the league. It was a Friday night kickoff, the curtain raiser for League One. Five goals against Sunderland. Um, just a, a wonderful, wonderful performance. So there we go, five star Charlton, Triumph, Darren Prattley um, in his uh, debut performance for Sunderland, obviously a brilliant debut to start for the club. Jamie Ward was on form, absolute star, problem is he's on loan from Nottingham Forest. And then some, some uh, Premier League managers looking in some of our players, obviously some of them are on loan. Um, but yeah so there we go we will leave it there for this episode our first game of the season obviously a, a wonderful 5-0 win away at Sunderland 8 days time we take on uh, Shrewsbury in our first home game of the season I hope to see you there in the meantime have a wonderful time and we'll see you in a bit thanks for watching